All right. Hi. Welcome to the uh, Node.js Inclusivity Working Group meeting. Uh, we're going to be working off of our agenda that's in GitHub today, issue number 80. Uh, and so just to start, uh, I'm going to be kind of like walking us through the agenda. Uh, my name is Ashley Williams. I work for NPM. And we are going to have meeting notes taken by uh, Bo. And yes. if you would like to kick off introductions. Uh, cool. I'm Bo Gunderson. I like Node a lot. I work for personalgenomes.org. Awesome. Brian? Uh, my name is Brian Hughes. I work for Pandora, and I also like Node a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nexi? Uh, yes, my name is uh, Nexi, among other things. Um, I, too, enjoy Node uh, quite a bit. Awesome. Jeremiah? Um, hello, I'm Jeremiah Sankpil, a.k.a. Fishrock123, Node.js TSC um, from NodeSource. And just to note, this is the 2016 um, January 21st meeting. Excellent. Kat? Hi, my name's uh, Kat Marchand, and I work for NPM on the CLI team. Uh, and I think that's it. I'm just, uh, no, it's okay, I guess. I was going to say, do you like Node? That seems to be the, the question <laughs> today. <laughs> uh, and finally, Scott. Um, Scott Gonzalez. I also like Node. Um, I, I like it better than the 01 days, too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so we have a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to kick this off. Hopefully, I know we ended thir after 30 minutes yesterday, I can't, or the last meeting. I can't, I can't say we'll do that this time, but we'll try. Um, all right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about are some working group operations. If you, you've probably noticed that we've had a lot of activity on our GitHub, which is super great. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do was talk about a PR I made to create the contributing.md uh, and just give a kind of overview because I kind of introduced two things on that. So that is, uh, that was PR number 88. <laughs> and so... In that, basically, it was kind of like a welcome, and additionally, it uh, suggested some first steps for contributors, which was to both read our charter, read our latest meeting notes, and also read some of our documentation, which we've started in a directory called docs on our repo. Uh, and then finally, what I did is I kind of described what I see the working group kind of delivering, which is two types of things, one being policy and the other being programs. Uh, and so you can go read about uh, that there, but I thought I'd open this up to if anyone had comments or questions, if they possibly didn't see this PR come through. All right. Looks like no questions. That PR is there. You can always open up new issues. Um, so uh, moving on. To... I should really have clicked that. Uh, we, uh, Brian worked uh, really hard <laughs> through the, like, a lot of comments on the policy issue structure. Um, we also have an open issue for the program issue structure, but Brian, if you want to just go over uh, kind of what you did there, um, just give a summary for the group. Yeah, so the basic idea is we have a new doc. It's in the docs folder called policyissues.md. And essentially, this talks about uh, filing issues and kind of you know what we are looking for in issues and kind of the kind of structure we want to follow. Um, it provides a lot of structure in which you know we have like explicit types of issues. Uh, there's uh, three types right now. I expect this to grow quite a bit over time. Now we have question. Uh, there can be a request for a change to an existing policy, or a request for a new policy. Uh, and then we'll get the programs in there as well once we define that a little more. Uh, but then for each of those types, it also defines kind of what kinds of information we expect for those. Uh, one of the big things that this adds is uh, the ability to define a focus for an issue. Basically, where we're talking about, you know, this is what we consider on topic, and this is what we consider to be off topic. You know, hopefully this will help keep our discussions a little more focused. And uh, there's also, like, some examples. We have a really awesome magic link that Charlotte came up with, which I totally love. Do so you want to explain what that means? Yeah, so a magic link, uh, basically you click on it. Uh, there's a point that says, you know, click here to create this type of issue. It'll load up the issue page and, like, actually pre-fill a bunch of information. It'll pre-fill, like, the title for the issue and, um, like, a little skeleton for the body of the issue as well. 
Yeah, this was super cool. Shout out to Charlotte, who I think is watching right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for a little bit of background, if you don't know why this was super important to us, um, we had run into some is to some runaway issues in our early days, and so by de by being very specific about defining a focus, we can point out things as derailing, which is a violation of our code of conduct, and easily moderate them, uh, which is super important. Does anybody have any comments or questions on that? <clears throat> All righty. Cool. Moving on. All right, this is kind of a big topic, and it's got several subsections. Uh, so the general idea here is admissions. Uh, so we have a form now that's live that's linked from both our README and the docs page. Uh, that was something that uh, both Brian and Jonah worked on, which was super cool. Um, as we move forward, though, when we think about admissions, we've been talking about having two roles, both a contributor and a member role. And that's being discussed uh, and led kind of by Julie and Bo in issue number 65. Uh, Bo, do you want to give kind of like a summary of that? I don't know if we're at a spot where... Uh... It's kind of gelled yet, but we have some ideas around what the roles and responsibilities might be. I just don't think we've kind of codified them yet. Uh, so I think that we, we need a little additional time on that issue. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, so one of the things that I saw on the issue that was one of the biggest questions that came up was it sounds like we're pretty certain that we like the two different roles. Exactly what those requ uh, requirements for each role will be is not quite defined. Yeah. But both those roles do mean that we're going to be needing to talk about public and private spaces, uh, which is something that came up. And so one of the things that did come up is that it would our Slack has been incredibly useful for us, and that we probably need a chat-like program for both members and then ones that are for members and contributors. Um, go for it. Um, could you go over what the two roles are? Uh, sure, I can, uh, unless you'd like to, Bo. Go for it. All right, cool. So the general summary of that issue is that we will have people who are officially members of the working group, and that's going to be a specific type of uh, like time-bound like involvement that you have. So like you're going to like commit to being available to work for the like on inclusivity working group issues for a certain amount of time, uh, and then there's like a contributor kind of membership level, which is less of a commitment, um, not necessarily able to access private spaces, uh, but are still actively working on certain things. Was kind of the two things because we had a lot of people who were interested in getting involved in like our initiatives and programs, but didn't necessarily either have the ability to or the desire yet to become a full member. Uh, I saw that you had a question, Brian. All right, well, <clears throat> that was something I wanted to add. Uh, Absolutely. Kind of an, an important point, this is kind of a legalistic point, too, is that con uh, contributors are non-voting members of the working group. Cool. I yes, think we've so. been uh, using the word collaborator instead of contributor. Ah, or, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Um, so yes, collaborators and members. Um, and one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this in the meeting today is because Jonah opened an issue, and it's, it's too bad that Jonah's not here. He'll probably be arriving any minute now. Um, but an issue that he filed about cleaning up our current Slack channel. Uh, I think what we'd like to do, and this is also something that we specified in our charter that we kind of need to do, is we need to, I think, take our current Slack and make it private for just members. And then we need to create a new Slack, which is available to collaborators. Um, and our current Slack has lots of people in it, uh, many of whom have not participated in any of the working group um, efforts for quite a while now. Uh, did anybody have any uh, thoughts about either both public and private spaces and uh, cleaning up the Slack? So having... Um, Slacks is oh. going to there's like there's going to be like management overhead with that. Would it be possible to just use private chan like other channels in the Slack that we already have? Yeah, we can have private channels oh. in Slack as is. Yeah, sorry, I guess I said Slacks. I I'm an IRC person. I don't know. 
is it a channel? I guess it's called a channel. Yeah, public and private channel. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can work with a private channel pretty well. Uh, I think for we'll we'll probably need to reset the whole Slack or just create a new one and blow this one away so the history isn't there. Uh, but then we can just have a members only area. Um, and hopefully it won't be like too many discussions, but we'll definitely need to have like a number of private things. We can yeah. also create channels um, piecemeal for uh, community collaborators and just have discussions with those collaborators on specific topics and then archive the channels. Yeah, that seems like a great idea. Uh, so welcome Jonah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we actually were just in the uh, in the midst of talking about the public and private spaces and cleaning up the Slack. So didn't know if you wanted to weigh in. Know you've done some work on that already. Uh, 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 well, I I mean I've created the issue, but uh, I haven't actually started since we wanted to discuss in the meeting. But uh, yeah, uh, um, I'll see what what comes out of this, and then I guess I'll try and. Uh, do some of it, I suppose. All right, cool. Uh, does anyone have anything else to to add on that specific topic? All right, so this is something that I think is going to be uh, a deliverable we'd like to see uh, in the next two weeks, which is kind of the cadence we've been following. Uh, how are you uh, and Julie, uh, Bo, how are you and Ju Julie feeling about kind of owning that role definitions document? Uh, I feel good about it. All right, cool. Um, is there anybody who'd kind of like to own the public, private spaces Slack? I know Jonah is on that. Does anyone want to kind of join Jonah in that effort? I can probably help Jonah with that. All right. Awesome. Sounds great. Excellent. We're moving right along. Love this. Okay, cool. Uh, so the next issue uh, we want to talk about is uh, moderation for the Greater Node community, which was an issue I filed, number 79. Uh, and this issue came out of a larger discussion on the moderation repo, uh, moderation repo number 25. And so as you may or may not be aware, there's a, a very heated thread and it's become actually multiple threads on the Node repo right now about a security issue, potential security issue regarding Buffer. Uh, and there's been a lot of need for moderating on the thread. There's been a lot of not constructive communication and that sort of thing. And the moderators actually, uh, people who have been doing moderation, people on the TSC actually kind of reached out to the inclusivity group um, and were asking for our advice. And then additionally, part of what came out of that was there was kind of a, a tragedy of the commons situation where since anybody from the TSC could kind of jump in and moderate, some not really anybody did. And then when they did, it wasn't a uh, coherent effort. And oftentimes, some people kind of were working against each other. And so in this, in, in this vein, it was suggested that potentially the inclusivity working group could serve as a resource for moderation when either no one stood up or the TSC was so close to the issue that it was difficult for them to really have the appropriate perspective to be doing uh, moderation. Because uh, they were either felt too close to it, too emotional, um, were too focused on the technical aspect and not the moderation aspect. And so this is a really interesting thing because this follows up the, the issue that Trot was working on, which was us upstreaming um, some of the things that we work on to the node group. And so right now what this looks like is, is pretty vague, uh, but I wanted to open that up because I think it's really neat that we're kind of getting an ask from the greater node community. Initial reactions. Kat. Um, so you're saying having us, the, the inclusivity working group, um, actually do moderation? Yeah, serve as a resource for, for moderators. And this was right. proposed by both uh, Arvag and... Uh, just now, uh, in that in that issue, I'm surprised because I, I remember we had a conversation. We had various conversations where they didn't want us specifically to do it, but I assumed that a lot of us would end up being part of the the um, 
moderation group, whatever, that would be separate from us. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's still going to be people that express that discomfort, or if like James and and Rod had like a change of mind or something. I, I'm I'm just curious as to what changed because I also don't feel like. I'm fine with it. Like I'm actually <laughs> cool with us like jumping in and doing moderation ourselves. So, um, and it it's great that they like um, think that we could do well at that. Um, yeah, they specifically mentioned us, which I thought was really fantastic. I think the idea is not that we would like just. I think the idea is that they would tap us in. They'd be like, "We need help. Can you help us?" in that sense. And so it wouldn't be us just jumping in and moderating, but rather being like, this is a situation where we need more people uh, and pot potentially like more people who are like specifically good at doing this type of work. Uh, and so they would, it, it's like an ask for our help um, in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's kind of boxed. I think, I think the original fear, if, if I was understanding it correctly, was that by becoming the inclusivity group, we by being the inclusivity group were moderators, um, just kind of like by that identity, whereas instead of it being our identity, it's now something that we can serve as a resource for. If, but I could, I could have the wrong. Uh, Jeremiah? Um, my, so I, I don't think I've read every single comment ever. My understanding is that um, we'd sort of fall back to the inclusivity group for moderation if no one stood up. Is that the understanding that you have too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think like the concern was more that um, if you had like a, a more dedicated moderation group, I guess, um, for for something like that, that that group would be um, always just the defaults, um, something sort of like that. If something's more like a fallback, then some some of us can sometimes take the role if it's nothing too big or anything. Like I think the ch me ch taking the uh, chakra core thread worked out pretty well. So, right, uh, Brian, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, so um, going back to Kat's concern a little bit, I actually asked that exact question in the moderation thread to kind of get their feedback. And uh, people kind of remember those discussions, but were basically like, yeah, it, it, we're, it seems like we're fine with it now. Um, I think that kind of came out with, well, A, there being an, a need for it, but also we actually have our charter. You know, we defined our scope. So a lot of the fears around that, I think now that we have this charter that explicitly defines our scope, they realize that, well, we're not going to use this as like a power grab or something, and that we can't. And hey, look at that. We didn't set the whole no community on fire. And we didn't like... <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Go team. Yeah. <laughs> what is the scope and, uh, of the moderation group? <clears throat> the scope of the moderation group? Yes. So the scope of the moderation group, to my understanding, is the entire uh, Node.js community on GitHub. And then additionally, we are working right now to include the IRC channel. So as a clarification to that, there's no moderation working group. Um, there's just Sorry, a yeah. private repository that we um, collaborate on to, to do that. And so basically, that repository would be the joint responsibility of the TSC and inclusivity? Is that what, mechanically speaking, is that what we would be getting at? Like, um, so, so I think it would be that the moderation group would tap inclusivity when they needed help. Yeah, I think, I think what's going on is that the moderation is responsibility of the TSC, and the TSC will defer to the inclusivity work, working group. That sounds really uh, vague and like uh, it's not going to work. Um, my, the, well, I'm hearing people say this, and my first concern is that this whole idea of falling back when necessary sounds to me kind of like a cop out of like, oh well, we'll totally take care of it until we're burnt out, and then we'll just throw you to the dogs instead. Um, and so I think we need to have something a little more clear and concise about what's the chain of command, how does moderation happen. And like a moderation group that isn't actually a working group but just a private repository also uh, really doesn't sit right with me as well. Uh, if it's something that we need to do um, frequently, which 
I can tell you it is after having been an IRC moderator for several years. Uh, it's something that we need to actually do properly. Uh, and in addition to that, I don't think that it's appropriate for us to be like, okay, I'm a moderator. I'm in the moderator working group, and this is what I do. I moderate because um, I've seen many people, myself included, kind of go through cycles of getting burnt out of having to do moderation all the time, every day. Uh, so maybe this is something that we need to have a, a larger conversation on. But that, that's my two cents. Yeah. It also, there's always the possibility of, <clears throat> um, because the scope of the moderation group is so large, there might always be possibility of just a power abuse I mean, I don't know how we define that, um, but the moderation group would have to have some sort of power for, like, I don't know, deleting comments or something. Um, and that's always that issue, I guess. So as a note on moderation, um, a reason why for GitHub specifically it falls to the TSC is because the TSC are owners on the GitHub org, and owners on the GitHub org are the only pe people able to ban people from the GitHub org. Not that we do that lightly or anything, but that is a note. Yeah, um, just to add a little bit of history, that uh, that private moderation repo is is somewhat new, and we're that that's getting used to. Uh, track the people who are getting banned and why. I've added a bunch of labels to that repo so that we can start kind of understanding when harassment or trolling happens when it does and kind of why, um, so we can have some data on that. Uh, also to back up, I think uh, Nexi makes a really excellent point that this needs to be significantly more fleshed out. And I think documenting these policies, while there's been some of that going on in moderation, those those policies are kind of um, they live in different several different areas and they're certainly not exactly where they want to be right now. So as at, with the idea that the moderation group is kind of asking like, hey, inclusivity, like we're interested in your thoughts. I think we have the opportunity to kind of write something up and ask them what they think. Uh, and so if we think that it needs to be more fleshed out, um, I think we have the opportunity to do that. And so it sounds like there's a lot of people who are interested. Is are there? Can I find like two people who want to kind of own this? Uh, I get the I get the impression that Nexi in particular, you're very interested in this. I, I mean, I'm I'm I have a vested interest in the outcome. Um, I'm I'm more than happy to be involved in discussions on the actual mechanism of like the inclusivity group's involvement in moderation. Um, oh. I don't necessarily think it's something I want to own just yet. I'm, this is like my first meeting, and I <laughs> primarily came here just because I wanted uh, to kind of voice my concerns around like moderation on IRC and how that relates to the rest of the community at large, given that that's pretty much all I've been, been doing in terms of moderation, and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that there isn't too much you know, kind of um, disparity between what we're talking about on GitHub and how things play out on IRC and elsewhere. Yeah. The relationship between GitHub and IRC, especially in the written policy now in the Node repo, is something that has actively been changing in the last two weeks uh, to start trying to include IRC more. Uh, I saw both Brian and Kat's hand regarding this. Mm -hmm. uh, are y'all interested in kind of being the owners with Nexi as an, an awesome person to help add stuff so she doesn't feel like she has to do too much? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm interested. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just don't want to drop the ball, and, and I want to get a chance to kind of get a feel for, for how everyone works together before I commit to too much. Oh, so definitely. Totally understood. I mean, when I say owners, I just mean, like, the, it's your job to make sure it doesn't fall on the floor. It doesn't mean that you have to work alone. That's also why I try and get buddies. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I would say that we could also have um, people who just do moderation, or I, a lot of times you'll end up with, um, maybe like people that are really more developer advocates that aren't actually in the working group. Um, they're just very active on IRC, or maybe they're active in Slack, and so they see a lot of what's going on, and they, c they have moderation privileges within whatever medium they're working on, right? So like you can give somebody op in IRC and not make them an owner in GitHub, not give them permissions in Slack, not do any of the other things that come along with additional um, benefits, but you know, you have people that are active in the community that are doing moderation. <clears throat> and so it gets spread out across a larger group than just this working group. 
um, and you you find the people that you trust for each medium to do that moderation, and the things can escalate, right? I mean, at the highest level, banning someone on GitHub, um, obviously we don't need TSC directly involved in moderation in order to be able to escalate to the TSC to get somebody banned. I think that's a super excellent point. Kat, I see you nodding your head. Do you want to add anything? No, that sounds great. Um, I think that having those policies is great, duh, and I look forward to it. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, so, Brian? Um, yeah, uh, one thing I'd like to add, so there was some discussion in that uh, those moderation threads in the moderation repo as well, just kind of like bouncing some ideas around. And I, I kind of, like, one of the ones that I was bouncing around, I think a lot of people agreed on both, you know, myself and some not in the working group, was having like, you know, a list of volunteers for moderation. And there's I definitely this feel that we sort of wanted all of the Node.js contributors at some point in time to be at least a little bit trained in moderation and able to take that on. And there's, I think, about 400 or so of us. So there's definitely this idea that, you know, or I got the impression, you know, from those discussions that the inclusivity working group's role is more to define the processes uh, for this uh, and not so much that we're going to be the, the bulk of the enforcers sort of in the field, but we can define the process of, you know, how do we define a moderator, how do we train moderators and things of that nature. And, and that's something that I think is a good approach. Awesome. Uh, is there anything anybody else wants to add regarding uh, moderation? I think we've got a really great start. Um, this certainly is not going to be something we necessarily shake out in the next two weeks, but I think we can probably get a draft going and get some cool conversations going. It's going to involve a lot of us interacting uh, with other members from the TSC too, so it'll be a big conversation. Yeah, I have uh, tons to add to that, but I feel like uh, it would be too much of a deep dive for this meeting, so I'm happy to attend future meetings specifically for, you know, for that. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, great. Uh, so moving on, speaking of the TSC, uh, now that we've been ratified, yay, ratified, um, uh, the TSC has asked us to nominate someone from our group uh, for membership in the TSC. And uh, Jeremiah, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, sure. So the TSC has been discussing its composition somewhat, um, and I don't have timelines for any of this specifically, but the general idea was since we have the TSC um, uh, split from the CTC, those, those groups would sort of um, change and not end up being the same people. Um, and so this is um, a first step in that. Um, on the TSC's end, and so the TSC would like someone from the inclusivity working group, um, well, would like the inclusivity wor working group to nominate someone from that working group to the TSC. Um, and there's just, just to like um, keep everyone's ex expectations correct, um, there's no like timeline for that, like I, if you nominate someone today, it's not like you're not going to necessarily join the meeting later today because we haven't sorted everything out like regarding how that even works. So, but yeah. Awesome. So um, if anyone has questions about that, feel free to ask me. Uh, just just for everyone else's edification, uh, Jonah and I are both running for the Node Board of Directors, and so we both. Uh, we're going to ask if the working group felt like it was okay for us to postpone this nomination until after that election happened. Yep. Does everyone feel like that's cool? Remember to do the, the verbal yes and not the <laughs> nod. <laughs> the yes. hot thumbs up because no one can see you. <laughs> yes, um, I, I think it's a good idea. Yes. Cool. I um, concur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so something that we might do uh, just to kind of like get thoughts on that is there is an issue filed for uh, that nomination, number 78. So if people have questions about what the role would entail and or have suggestions on who they think would be good and that sort of thing, I think we can kind of start having a conversation there uh, and we'll just move on that after the 30th when that election is over. All right. Oh my goodness. So we just made it through all of the working group operations section of our agenda, which is great. Um, and so does anybody have any other working group operations stuff that I haven't brought up that they'd like to discuss? Nope. All righty. 
So uh, we are going to move on to the activities section. And a couple of people had asked me what the activities section in the agenda is for. And so uh, just to clarify that, that's going to be for all of the cool things that we end up doing in the community, kind of like the news about the stuff we've done. Um, and so uh, it's a little small now, but I anticipate that it will grow as we continue to do cool things. And the one thing I just wanted to point out was um, the Shocker Core was open source, and it got a ton of great feedback. And just wanted to say, again, good job to everybody who participated in giving them advice. Um, Y'all did really awesome. Uh, I think I'd like to point out is uh, Rick Waldron opened an issue on their repository just today about creating uh, issue labels to make it easier for people who are interested in joining open source to participate there. Uh, so they have a whole bunch of work going on there and uh, they uh, mentioned a couple of us and I'm sure they would love everybody's feedback on that. So, uh, <coughs> any other cool things? Maybe we can link that in the in the meeting notes or something. Yes, I should do that. Sorry, it happened yesterday and I forgot. I will link it. I promise. Ah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other activities anyone wants to to chat about? Uh, something something I would like to bring up is uh, you may or may not have noticed on the social medias that there are several other uh, large language and framework communities that are currently tarrying with uh, inclusivity issues. Uh, most importantly, there's a lot of uh, communities right now trying to get codes of conduct in place. Um, I tweeted this morning, and we'll probably try and like poke around, uh, that if those communities wanted to reach out and have any sort of advice or like I think that we can do very similar to what we do with Shocker Core in advising in that way um, and being a support a support group for other other communities trying to do this stuff. Uh, and I was interested in what other people thought about that. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also really like the idea. I mean, we learned a lot. I think we can share it with others. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, if you are all inclined, you I feel like tweeting and like reaching out to people uh, would be great. I don't know people personally in like the PHP or the Django community, um, but it seems like that might be a great place to reach out. Yes. <laughs> PHP especially. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's. I mean, we've all been there, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, so if we don't have any more activities, uh, the next section is open PRs, which I am very happy to say we don't have any of. Uh, good job. Go team. Um, so, uh, and then finally, uh, we have our deliverables section. So the first, the first thing that we're going to talk about now is scheduling. And so we've been working on a two-week uh, meeting cadence. Does anybody have any objections or questions or comments on that? I think it's right. been good. Cool. Well, we'll keep working with that until we decide that it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so uh, Trot, who unfortunately couldn't make today, uh, has filed an issue uh, about rotating the times. Um, I've seen a couple comments on this. Uh, but I think it would be very interesting to figure out exactly what time would work and whether or not we want to just be consistently rotating uh, the times. Uh, does anyone have any comments on that right now? That mm. timetable was wonderful and super useful, and I'm so happy you did that. It's it's so nice. <coughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> the problem with me is that I believe one time in my time zone is 2 a.m., which isn't exactly the best time to probably do a meeting. Uh, so I don't know, maybe if we decide on that, I, then I just can't join those meetings, which is fine by me. Yeah, but, uh, my yeah, time zone actually has has only like one like reasonable time. Uh, but oh. I think the idea is like the goal is to rotate so that everybody, every time zone has at least the opportunity to meet at one of them. Now. Given the attendance that we have, we can't really be sure if the attendance is because of the time we're currently doing it um, or it's just the people who are interested. It would not make a lot of sense for all of us to meet at 
very inconvenient times for us if we don't have anybody joining from another time zone. So this is where things get tricky. Uh, and I don't think we'll solve it in this meeting, but I'd like to see, like, you know, throw some ideas and check that out. Oh, Kat? I mean, we can just have, um, we have an agenda item process, and I think we can make sure that people who want to represent agenda items or participate in them, and we can see what our actual spread is like. And then per meeting, we can schedule those issues depending on the meeting and negotiate like, oh, next week, let's have a No San Francisco you know, let's have a no San Francisco time slot so that we can discuss these specific issues. We have these members in those time slots who are available to do, like, moderation or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can just do that. We can also just have, like, more than one meeting to discuss those issues. Like, if, there, if the participation doesn't overlap, there's nothing wrong with having more than one meeting in a week. If only to, like hash out those specific issues or have a pre-meeting so they can give us like meeting notes and then we can we can finalize anything that needs to be finalized. So we, we can actually just do more than one. Um, we could even have, you know, we can even have micro meetings for for specific time zones so that everyone gets like a comfortable time to at least hash out some decision points for issues that we have brought up. Yeah, that's a that's a really excellent point. I will say since that we're so young as a group, I would still want to have like what I would call like the meeting so that we can just continue to talk about what the inertia is and keep it kind of coherent. But especially now with like such a large topic like moderation, I think the idea of micro meetings is a really great one. Uh, something else that I think kind of emerged from what you were saying is I've been trying to get an issue with the agenda date and time at least, or like the agenda like as soon as possible, and if we can try and do maybe some sort of like RSVP or like say you'll be there so that we can pick the time, that might uh, be helpful. Um, what I was doing with, oh, also kind of as part of that, I think it's really important to do like calendar invites for these Hangouts. We'll probably want to make an actual concrete process for doing that. Uh, circles are useful for this kind of thing. So, it sounds like we have another deliverable to add to the bottom, which is going to be a policy on scheduling meetings. Yay! <laughs> Document all the things. Uh, so, I know that Trot is interested in participating in that. Is there anybody who's currently in this meeting who would also uh, be interested in, in aiding Trot and maybe helping that, since he's also not here? Yeah, I would. That. Yeah? Okay, great. I mean, I'm sure we'll all weigh in. Uh, but that's very helpful. Uh, Jeremiah? Also, just on a note on that, I'm probably going to try and set up a calendar that goes through all the Node.js org related meetings so that we can figure out where things are not going to overlap with other meetings, so that will just touch on that. That's awesome. Very can cool. Can you also make sure that... Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> no. I was going to say, I see you, Scott. Um, I was going to ask, is there a policy about voting and making decisions within this group. I don't see anything, like I just did a search for vote, voting and quorum and didn't see anything about um, like required numbers, majority votes or anything like that, um, which comes into play if we're going to be splitting up meetings or if people can't make meetings because of time zones and, and this is the, the area where we tend to make final decisions. Uh, I think that's a really good point and the answer is no, we do not currently have one. Um, so. Do we inherit that from a working group's document from TSC level? So I do think that is true. So yeah, we don't have a specific one, but I do think we inherit something. I'm not sure if it... I think that... So for the TSC, I think the quorum is 60%. Cool. So it would be something along those lines. Um. Scott, if you'd be interested in like writing up like a straw proposal for that in a PR and we could like check it out, I think that could be really cool. Sure. Um, great. Uh, alrighty. So uh, in the next two weeks, so we um, regarding scheduling that. All right, rotating meeting times. So let's try. Let's say. Um, by Monday, like try and comment on the rotating meeting times, and by Monday we'll try and and actually get something scheduled for the next two weeks. That way we have some time to think about exactly how we want to do the time stuff. Does that seem to work for everyone? Verbal yes. eyes, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. 
cool. Um, all right, and then we also have something else to schedule, which I think is like super exciting, which is uh, we've had several people apply to be either members or collaborators uh, in the group. And there's a couple of things that we need to land before we do that, in particular the role definitions. Um, and I think also, I'm, we probably don't need to land the public and private sp spaces stuff regarding the Slack, but I think it, that's also kind of important. So I was thinking that we could review those membership applications sometime late next week. Do we think that that's viable? Yeah. How many applications are there right now? Two. There are, there are three. Three? Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't look through my email. Oh. Well. Interesting. Yeah. So there, there are three right now, two for full membership and one for just being a collaborator. Um, so, But I want to make sure that we have those roles clearly defined before we, we review them. Uh, but I do also want to review them in a timely fashion because it's not fair to make people fill out a form and then wait forever. <laughs> um, so, Bo, oh, I know that you were taking a point on... Oh, we lost Scott. Oh, no. Uh, but I know you're taking point on that roles definition. Yep. Uh, do Do you think that we'd be able to have at least something in place uh, before Friday next week? Yes, definitely. Awesome. Great. Uh, so I was thinking the meeting could be somewhere like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometime of. Uh, I try to avoid the weekends, uh, but some point late next week. Does anyone have a preference? No. Okay. Um, well, I'll start an, an, an issue for that, and uh, let's let's make sure we have that on the calendar and the meeting, uh, the working group meeting, uh, on the calendar by Monday, end of day, in San Francisco, maybe. I don't know. T times are weird. Uh, does that seem good regarding scheduling stuff? Yeah. Verbal eyes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yay! Yes. We're gonna yes. get used to this at some point. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk over anyone, though. But, but when you're all agreeing in unison, it like sounds it sounds cool. That's totally okay. <laughs> it's not interrupting. I guess it's unless someone was like, "Nay," but I don't know. That'd be fun. <laughs> all right. Um, so the last the last thing in the deliverables is what do we want to accomplish in the next two weeks? I threw uh, four things down there that I saw issues for. Um, that does not mean that we have to do them. We can we can scratch some of them. Uh, but to list what I have in the agenda right now, uh, the first is a polish policy regarding membership roles, which Bo uh, and Julia are working on. Seems like that's everyone's cool with that. Do we agree that that's something we want to ship in the next two weeks? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Um, the next one was something that was brought uh, brought to us uh, from a member of the community about uh, asking the Node.js team to change the word gender to gender identity and expression in their code of conduct. Um, I think that this is a, a, a wonderful ask and something that we can definitely help uh, community members do like as, and support them doing it. Uh, thoughts? Yes. Yep. Yeah, this seems like a pretty, like, we, we should be able to drive small changes like this through. Like. Yeah. Awesome. OK. Uh, the next thing. Uh, is something is is a program I'd like to start, uh, and this is something that came out of a couple of people talking to me about their experiences getting involved in Node uh, just as beginners, and so it would just be a single document about getting started with contributing to Node, um, and so this I know that Node already has contributing, uh, but I was thinking that we could kind of go through it, and based on a lot of the feedback we got from an issue that I filed number eighty six. Uh, try and improve some of those things. Um, people's thoughts on this. Is this about making a new document or improving the existing ones? Um, so I think I think it would be neat to create like uh, its uh, its own document, uh, but I think it should take into account what's going on uh, in the documents that Node currently has, and I mean eventually like merge them together. I think. I think there's an opportunity for like a different type of document than like a contributing.md, something that could potentially serve as like a microsite in and of itself, like a visiting it and then it's like, hey, welcome to Node. 
here are some things you should read, what are all these things, uh, which is not necessarily what the contributing.md is supposed to serve as. <coughs> uh, but obviously part of this program would be answering that question. I see it yet, but... So uh, we, currently, we currently have two documents in core. There's a contributing.md, and there's a collaborator guide, and I have other stuff for onboarding in a PR somewhere. So if we can help, like, wrap all that stuff up, like, I'm more than willing to help out with that. Okay, that's really so awesome. Let me know well, whoever wants to work on Coalescing things is great. <laughs> um, yeah, Jonah. Um, if we end up, uh, um, me, uh, should we um, put that on the website in the end? I mean... The Node website? Yeah, so eventually, it, it, if you want, if you're interested in uh, contributing to Node, here's a guide. You don't need to visit the GitHub repository. You can just view on the on the website. Maybe like a short summary in the end, but that's in the future probably. I, I think that's a great standing. idea. Yeah. I don't know if, if anyone was able to take a look at that issue. There's some really, really interesting comments in it, I think. Uh, but Michael weighed in, in particular, saying that one of the hardest things for people is just trying to find all the stuff that tells them how to, to find stuff and do stuff. And so putting something on the website, I think, would be ideal. And as Michael is someone who helps run that, uh, I think we'd have a lot of buy-in from him because he seemed to think it was a good idea. Uh, Brian and then Jeremiah? Yeah, uh, so I was kind of looking at that as well, and just out of curiosity, I went to you know GitHub.com slash Node.js, you know, you know the org level, and there is the only thing at the top of that is you know there's no documents there, there's no contributing MD at an org level. Yeah, GitHub doesn't have a thing, but we have a link to the website, so I can imagine a lot of people going GitHub.com slash Node.js, they see Node.js.org, and they go there, and so you know getting some clear documentation and links to like funnel people from there, I think, could be a really big win too. That's great. Jeremiah? So the docs working group is moving to move documentation, um, a lot of this, so stuff other than just the API. The API docs already live in Node Core, but we're going to actually have our guides and stuff also in the Node Core repo, and it's going to build out from that onto the website. So we could have a doc somewhere else, probably. It wouldn't be any harder. You just need to you know, make sure the build tooling picks it up. Um, and that can just be built to the website then, too. Yeah. As someone who runs a doc site that's pulling docs from a million repos, I might have some technical qualms about that, but we can discuss that in another place. <laughs> uh, it becomes kind of a maintenance thing, uh, and it can be very tricky to figure out how to contribute. Um, but that's getting meta. Anyways, cool. It sounds like we're excited about this idea and kind of want to move forward with it. Yep. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so... I, as, I guess kind of like a meta comment on your meta comment. Um, something to consider is if you are hesitant, having been heavily involved in this work, anyone that wants to contribute to that documentation will be extremely overwhelmed and ju probably just give up. Yeah, so, regarding pulling all the stuff from places? So, yeah, so like if something, even if it's like, oh, we can just solve this with technology, you know, we can pull in sources from many different places and, and it'll be fine. Um, if it seems like a technical challenge to you, it is, it is a non-technical, like, major hurdle to somebody that just wants to provide a fix because they saw a typo on a web page. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something I've experienced. Jeremiah? Um, so the idea isn't to have it from multiple sources. Um, basically, the website will just be serving stuff, and everything will just be in the Node Core repo. Ah, uh, okay. That cool. also means if you download like the source code, the source code, or the binary, um, the tarball, sorry, um, you get all that documentation with it. Cool. All right, well, this sounds like a fruitful issue. Um, we can comment more on this. So I have a, uh, currently the issue open is for people to share their experiences. Uh, at the end of this, I, I, I will own creating an issue for talking about uh, building this kind of as a response to issue 86. Um, okay, uh, our final deliverable before I open up to what other people would like to see uh, was something that came up. We've had a lot of people kind of ask, like, what's the history of this group? Uh, and it's, it's kind of interesting. And so I think that was a conversation between uh, Jonah and Brian. And so there's the suggestion of writing a, a document that kind of talks a little bit about the history and kind of can be a living document where we document, like, specific, like, 
cool things or people joining. Um, thoughts on that? It's uh, issue 85. I, I like it, but uh, I suppose I'm biased <laughs> on that. I like yeah, it. me too. Other so thoughts? I think I think it's probably a good idea. Um, like where in a technical thing you'd have Git history to show what has happened. We might we don't necessarily have that if we've done stuff like the chakra core thing. So I think I think like actually putting that somewhere would be cool. Sweet. Um, great. Uh, so. That's quite a few deliverables. Uh, all of them, I think, are really exciting. Are there anything? Is there anything else uh, that we'd really like to see happen in the next two weeks? All right. Well, great. Uh, so we've reached the end of our agenda within an hour. I'm so excited. That's good. Uh, does anyone have any uh, final like questions, comments, concerns? Shout outs. I just want to say, uh, you know, to each and every one of you, thank you. Thank you for being who you are and for doing what you do. Aww. And, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. who you are and doing oh. what you do. Yeah. <laughs> if my camera was on, you could see the hand hearts that I'm holding up right now. Um, oh. Well, thank you very much. That's really awesome. Uh, well, great. I think this uh, concludes our meeting. Thanks, everyone, who joined and participated and also joined and observed. Uh, I'll see you on the Internet. Bye. 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 Take care, all.